He came into the league doing stuff that people haven't seen in a minute. He's like a young Magic Johnson slash. No, he just mellow. He ain't Magic Johnson. He just mellow. Okay. He's one of one. He's one of one. One of one. <laughs> I'm Max Rasitar and I run Slam Kicks. I'm joined today by head of Puma Basketball and Footwear, Jeremy Slee. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about the Puma MB02. Get all into the design, all into the colorways. And I want to start with your fondest memory of the two's creation process now that you're so far removed from it. Mm, fondest memory was probably um, just getting to design a signature shoe for an athlete that has so much personality. Uh, you know, this shoe actually started at the exact same time as the one. So we kind of designed them concurrently. So we were really just getting to learn and know about, you know, who Melo really was like past, like what we saw on TV and, you know, on Facebook TV shows and stuff. Um, so just getting to know him and like seeing how, you know, he is what you see. He is, uh, he's all the things that he says he is. He is rare, um, but he's just a, he's a good kid and um, super exciting. Just like his game is just as exciting as his personality. So you designed them at the same time, but you didn't lead the charge on the one. Is that correct? Nope, it wasn't me. It was uh, actually Jacob Garcia, who was at that point a senior designer for us. Um, it's just me and him designing shoes at this point. Uh, so we're a small team, but yeah, if I didn't do it, Jacob did it. And how did you guys go about attacking two sneakers at one time? We actually approach a lot of the signature product with, with that same approach because we'll draw like, you know, four different concepts and they'll pick their top two and then we'll make both so we can get ahead of one um, just in case one is, you know, got some issues or got some timing issues. Uh, a lot of the times when we sign signature athletes, it's not on the perfect calendar. So it's like, you know, we may have to get those stuff done really quick and go to Asia like immediately after we start sketching. Um, so yeah, we usually try to do two, two just to like save time really. And then for you as, as the leading force on the two, what separated that silhouette from the first one? What made you say, okay, here's the two, we're gonna emphasize the wings on this silhouette more, more so than we did on the one. So, you know, Mellow is a creature of habit. So like silhouette as a whole is really similar. Like the shape and the top line are really similar, uh, the heights. Um, but the big thing with this was like, you know, it was a different tattoo. First off, we were focused on his calf tattoo the first time, uh, you know, which was based off of the, um, it's a rocket ship that says the sky is the limit. Oh, sky isn't the limit, it's the view. Is that what it is? I don't know. But yeah, that, that was, that's what's on your mood board on, on Instagram, at least. Yeah. So, so that first one was about, you know, the whole space, uh, theme. And then the second one was all based off of his, his angel wings, uh, one chest tattoo. So that was the biggest thing, uh, in terms of like design direction that was different. And speaking of that tattoo, you know, the, we can see the, the wings right here on this, on this lateral side, um, but there is a part of it that's a little bit more of a raised texture. And I'm wondering if that's a functional purpose as well as an aesthetic purpose, where it's like right there, like towards the back of the tattoo. For sure, there's, I mean, all the, uh, I got a shoot here action. Adds the stability and support without getting heavy. So like, it's like a framed out structure instead of like a solid piece. Um, so you get that su st support and stability without getting over heavy, uh, you know. And you got some breathability more because you have the engineered mesh that's zoned so it's breathable in certain spots it's all functional um but yeah so yeah it's kind of like a bridge structure that kind of does what it needs to do without getting too overbuilt gotcha so you bring up nitro and can we get super nerdy for a second can you just break down for the people out there the actual benefits of nitro and any other of the very nerdy parts of the two the, the whole point of i nitro is like it's a nitro infused foam so it keeps it super lightweight uh, basically like injecting gas into a foam block and it, it expands it and makes it super lightweight and um, but keeps it bouncy at the same time. Um, so it's got like more rebound and you know, I don't know if people know what this is called, but P-Bax is a big one with like the little ball that you see in some of the other products that you see in the market. It's bouncier than that, more rebound than that and, and lighter than that. Uh, in terms of the other techie stuff in the shoe, I would say the engineered mesh, like I said, the zoned parts of it where they're open in certain areas and closed in other areas, uh, combined with the, the cage structure of the wings on the side is, uh, you know, makes for a, a solid, stable, but lightweight shoe. Uh, all right. So we talked about the performance, uh, side of the two. What about from a storytelling side of the two? How does the not from here idea that got started on the one get furthered on the two? So this is actually pretty dope. When we first presented this, we created like these three worlds. So like we had basically an image map and on the, in the middle was like the not from here it was like spaceships, 
yeah. planets and stuff like that. The bottom was like more of an underworld type vibe. And then the mm -hmm. top, was like this whole like angelic celestial world, like what was above mm -hmm. this. So for me, it was dope because Mellow's into angels and I'm, I'm all about that life too. So like, there's this whole idea of like this, this celestial world where the angels are, you know, the, 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 like Michael, the angel of, uh, was the battle angels and stuff like that. Um, mm. kind of represent a different part of not from here. So like, we still can't, we can't see it, but we know it's there. And it kind of represents his game at the same time of being like something that you haven't seen before. So you, so you present him all this stuff and this is stuff that you guys are um in concert with right you're in sync with all this so so we go from not from here on the one what's the idea of the two can you break that down into like three four words like we have from for not from here i mean it's still the same thing i think all mellow's words are, are going to be mellow's words forever mm -hmm. not here <laughs> rare one of one you get new words every season but this one was it was a big one he's pretty set in uh who he is and 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 mm -hmm. unique so we're gonna say unique in as many ways as we can so those are the words that are for him. But we saw on your Instagram, your mood board said, it said beyond, out of this world, and sky is not the limit, it's just the view. So I'm wondering for you, Jeremy, as a designer, as someone who's been doing this since you're 12 years old, what is your relationship with fear in these moments? Like, are you actually going outside of your safe, quote unquote, parameters when you're designing these silhouettes? I mean, for me personally, my goal is to make a banger that you have to at least pick up even if you don't like it you got to pick it up and and look at it and try it on to see how it feels so i'm always going to push the boundaries in terms of like what i'm designing i want it to look like something before you even you know you, like i said you gotta you gotta look at it first to get it in somebody's foot uh in terms of designing specifically for mellow because of who he is and how he you know how he rolls and how his life has been we've seen him grow up on tv he is uber unique uh he's everything that you think he is and like I said, rare one of one, uh, not from here are all perfect examples of who he is. And um, so when we're designing, we try to do something that's different that we haven't seen in the market. Um, super like, the goal is probably to be more polarizing than not because he's sort of, he's that. Um, you know, something that stands out, like has a lot of personality just like he does. Um, yeah, so we're, we're kind of pushing past like the, you know, the blase blah, like, everyday basketball shoe we want to get it to a point where it has like a personality like i think signature shoes back in the day used to have a lot of personality and we want to get back to more of that which colorways on the two do you think have been the most expressive of yourself of of, of mellow of, of puma basketball as a whole i mean i'm holding the slime one it was dope because he's always talking about drip and slime and all that all that stuff um it kind of represents like the you know the other side of that map that we we're talking about uh, anything bright he loves bright colors so wh whether we have a story or not he wants to be the brightest most unique colorway out there i think with the two we did a lot more color blocking um than we did on the one so that was nice because he kind of evolved from like an all over you know orange shoe purple shoe so we got to like you get to see parts of the shoe that you didn't get to see before and we're still evolving from there so like You'll see in the near future, we have some crazy stuff coming. He's definitely evolving, but he wants to be special out there on the court, so. And for you as the head of Puma Basketball, how do you separate your visual language for, for Melo? That is a great question. I think it's hard to explain. <laughs> it's up guys' time, baby. We kind of have to start with a, a more, the story has to be first in terms of like design language of the shoe. So like it has to be something that has to do with him. Like it's all about Mello. So, you know, whether it's his tattoos or whether it's, you know, we're doing some colorways based on his dogs or you know, we're doing a lot of crazy stuff though. But we meet with him, he has ideas. They, be, they sound crazy sometimes, but they come out good. Um, but it's a, I don't even know what the word is. I think it's literally the rare one of one stuff like that that whole vibe of like just trying to be as unique as possible whether it's the shoe box you know whether it's uh, a story that has to do with i don't even know i can't even talk about the stories we're about to do now that i think about it. look we got some crazy stuff coming but you know the crazier the better for Melo. like he just wants to stand out make a statement on court just like he does with his game like he came to the league doing stuff that people haven't seen in a minute he's like a young Magic Johnson slash no he just mellow he ain't Magic Johnson he just mellow he's one of one he's one of one 
Wonderful. <laughs> and lastly, as a storyteller, is there anything that I missed that people should know about the two? Technically, there's two different things in the medial side. There's one shoe that says one of one, one that says rare. Uh, I guess the bottom has one of one in the outsole hidden with the feathers, but still has dynamic traction at the same time. So it's kind of a blending of those worlds of, you know, I think <laughs> this is just the beginning, but these are great and they're great basketball shoes. And, uh, yeah, that's all. That's, that's, it's just a good shoe, man. I see me, people it's possible to go buy them. <laughs> So we got more to explore. We got to go all the way up to the sky. We got to go in the middle. We got to go in the underworld. We got a lot of worlds to explore. A lot of worlds to explore. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today to break down the MB02 by Puma Basketball. No problem.